In today's video, I'm gonna break down what a calorie deficit is and how I use one to go from looking like this to looking like this and how you can too. Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Monday. This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going super basic. So if you guys are more advanced in your understanding of, of fat loss and, and reaching, you know, body composition goals, then this is probably gonna be a video that's a little basic for you, but I got a question on my Instagram direct message, which I, you know, I love getting the questions from you guys and I try to you know, answer them and some of them are so deep that I haven't even answered them yet because I'm still thinking about them. Some of them are so basic that I often think, man, how can you have a question so basic? But then I think back to when I first got into this. So I wanna give you guys some basic information about a caloric deficit because these are concepts that, you know, before I got into coaching and going back to school to understand physiology that these concepts were kind of foreign to me even when i first got into competing there was a lot of things that i had misconceptions about i've been watching your videos for about a week or so now and have recently subscribed thank you i've heard you talking about restricting calories versus creating a calorie deficit and i'm not sure what the difference is between the two they sound similar to me can you please explain absolutely so restricting calories to me all it means to restrict calories is to pay attention to how many calories you're eating now through tracking you download an app you plug all the foods in that you normally eat and you say oh i'm eating 2400 calories a day on average because most of us don't eat the same exact things every day and then you restrict by eating say 2000 calories therefore you're restricting 400 calories per day the second thing that you asked is, what's the difference between creating a caloric deficit? Calories in versus calories out is how fat loss happens, okay? There is an equation that seems super basic, but it is very complicated, okay? Our bodies are so dynamic. Sometimes when you eat more food, you burn more calories. Well, Paul, how does that make sense? Well, what's the other part of the equation, calories out? That's movement. What I've found in my years of coaching people and restricting calories myself, you know, over the last decade or so, I've done multiple preparations for competition and I'll put some videos in here where you can kind of see where I've gotten. And I've learned through each one of these preparations to get on stage that just because I lower my calories and increase my cardio does not mean that I increase my caloric deficit. Oftentimes people would say, coach, I am eating less and I'm doing more cardio, but I'm not losing weight. And I would say, okay, well, what am I missing here? How it's mathematically impossible, right? To eat less, do more cardio and not lose weight. But there's a couple huge variables when it comes to creating a caloric deficit. And you have to look at the entire 24 hour window, okay? So if you're eating 2,400 calories and you drop, you drop to 2,000, and you're doing 30 minutes of cardio and you increase to 60 minutes of cardio, that's two really good pieces of information that we have but we're missing some big ticket items. A caloric deficit is the amount of calories that you burn throughout the day, trying to create it in a negative manner, right? So whatever calories that you take in, burning more than that, right? So in the scenario that I just gave you, how could someone possibly increase cardio, decrease calories and not lose weight? I'll tell you how, because outside of the cardio, they start conserving energy. And I'll give you a perfect example. One year in prep, I started doing a lot of high intensity cardio and you guys will hear me talk about high intensity versus low intensity cardio for fat loss because although high intensity cardio gets a lot of attention, I think it's misused, right? High intensity cardio is very demanding. And so what I did was I started prep, I started doing high intensity cardio and I was so exhausted I stopped going to the park to shoot baskets. I stopped playing ping pong, which might sound silly, but if you've ever played ping pong and I would play for 30, 45 minutes a day and I'd be breaking a sweat, I completely removed that from my daily routine, okay? I stopped going for walks, just randomly walks. I started being very conservative with my energy, even at work. I would make sure that I didn't have to get up from my desk more than a couple times a day. I would try to conserve so that if I had a couple like work tickets that I had to do, I would actually try to do them all at once so I could come conserve energy. Back then I didn't have a fitness tracker, right? I didn't have a way of tracking steps. What I noticed when I started tracking the steps of my clients, if you increase somebody's cardio, naturally their steps should increase. But I actually noticed a trend. I would increase their cardio, 
their steps would stay the same. So what was happening? They were doing an additional 30 minutes of cardio, but they were reducing their output the rest of the day by, you know, maybe an equal amount. And this is where we get into a position where we're not creating a caloric deficit. So restricting calories just means that you're paying attention to your caloric intake and reducing it a little bit. But creating a caloric deficit requires the entire 24, 48, 72 hour window, maybe even a full week, right? Maybe you're someone that, you know, is very low calorie a couple days a week and then moderate the rest of the week. But over the course of the week, you're in a pretty big deficit because of that. And likewise, you can be in a deficit all week, four or five days a week, and you can out eat that deficit in one day, one meal, two days, and end up maintaining. And maybe this is a good strategy for you if you love where you're at. But my point being, when it comes to looking at creating a caloric deficit, you have to look at things that most people don't consider. Sleep is a huge variable. Sleep is gonna play a huge role in your digestion, your stress, your hormones, which will have a great impact on the rate at which you're burning calories, okay? If you have severely negatively impacted metabolism, hormones, sleep, stress is sky high, I have found many times with clients when we were doing lots of cardio, low calories, not making progress, we simply remove the cardio, gradually walk the calories up, focus on recovery, and boom, the scale starts dropping. The math wouldn't make sense. The math would suggest I'm doing less and eating more. But what happens is you start to move more because you're not conserving energy. You start to sleep better so your hormones improve, your cortisol lowers, okay? Things like this, things, these little hand movements, you don't realize how much fidgeting throughout the day can really impact weight loss. And you stop fidgeting when you've been severely calorically restricted for a long amount of time. I watched a really cool YouTube video from a guy named Andrew Huberman talking about fidgeting as a predictor for people that will not be out of shape. And I would say, I've noticed the same thing myself. If you have friends that can't sit still and they're always fidgeting, those might be the same people that get labeled to have a great metabolism or can never gain weight, right? Because you underestimate how much energy is burned just by nodding your head at a camera for a YouTube video vigorously, right? Probably watch some of my old videos. When I first started doing YouTube videos 12, 13 years ago, around prep, I would be so monotone. I would just talk like this and hi, my name is Paul. And looking back now, I can see what was happening. I was so lean, I was conserving energy. Now when I diet, I really pay attention to that stuff. Technology has been wonderful. It allows us to track our calories and macros easier. It also allows us to track our daily movement a lot easier. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be perfect with this, but if you notice that you've added cardio, but you're taking less total steps throughout the day, that's probably an indicator that you're just trading cardio for lifestyle stuff, which might be negatively impacting your lifestyle, right? So we can fit these things into our lifestyle. It's just caloric restriction that is used to lose weight. The caloric restriction or the caloric deficit that you're creating through your 24 or 40 hour window. That's what the value is. All these people trying to sell you something that they have this magic program, fasting, whatever it might be, all it's essentially doing is finding a way for you to change your behavior to create a caloric deficit. All right guys, that's gonna be it for me today. I'm gonna do a video every day this week. So send me your direct message questions. Comment below if you want me to do five videos in five days. Heck, maybe I can do seven for seven if you guys send me enough questions. All right, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.